everybody. Happy Friday. And we're coming up in the queue as we would expect. Hello, everybody. And that's what they don't see. That's what they don't see. All right. Welcome back, everyone. How are we doing today on this Friday? Is everyone ready to conduct a stakeholder interview? I am certainly ready. I know some of y'all in the chat were ready and we're even sharing your favorite movie theater snacks. Vanessa, what is your favorite movie theater popcorn mixin? Uh, I actually usually go just Twizzlers. Is that, is that okay? I don't know. What do y'all think? Is that okay? Can Vanessa just have Twizzlers? I, I, I'm sure it's fine. I usually don't I do the popcorn. You get stuff stuck in your teeth and like then it gets stuck all movie. I know. Yeah. I usually just eat the chocolate chips or whatever chocolate there is. So if I can have the chocolate, you can have the Twizzlers. It's all fine. Welcome back, everyone. Here is what we're going to do today. Overview, tips, five minutes, and then we're going to conduct our stakeholder interview. This is where all of you get to come up on stage and ask your stakeholder a question. The first two people will get two questions to kick us off get the ball rolling. And then after that, we will do one question per person. After that, since our stakeholder is going to need a break from all of the questioning and sharing and pain pointing, et cetera, we will take a little bit of a break, do feedback session, and then also Q&A and reflection. So hopefully at this point, everyone is up and ready to go. I do see some hands in the queue, which is amazing. This is how it works. You interview Jade Khan you get feedback, and then we all learn together. But before we start, let's get some tips from Coach Vanessa. What would you like to tell us about stakeholder interviews? Uh, well, I will say um, this is all made up, so please be gentle. I'm doing my best to kind of make up an entire business on the fly, uh, partly, so um, be, be gentle. Um, that being said, uh, Ask whatever questions you think that you need to ask in order to get the requirements that you need. Um, and also do some active listening. Um, ho hopefully, you know, you, you've done one of the active listening sessions that clicked before. But if not, I mean, basically, you, you want to kind of like work as, as if you're all part of the same consulting engagement. So even though you're on different teams, like really for this exercise, you're all part of the same consulting engagement. So listen to the questions that come before you. And try not to ask the same question twice, unless you need, now if you need some clarity though, like that is also a good part of active listening, which is, hey, to to to, to jump on that last question, can I ask a follow-up to that? You know, that is perfectly acceptable and actually does show some kind of like continuity um, in, in, the, in the session. The other thing I would say is you, you kind of want to, you want to kind of start high level and then start digging in um, and, try to make it conversational as possible where it's it's not it's it's a little challenging for a stakeholder and or a client in general if you're going like onto this subject and then you totally pivot to this subject and then you pivot to this subject and then you're back to this one so as much as you can kind of listen to the people that talk before you and and keep building on that digging in deeper to in in certain directions but see where the conversation goes start high level and then start getting into those details to get what you need beautiful yeah so imagine you're in a room with all of the other learners all of you are on the same team about to interview the stakeholder. Make it one clear conversation. Let us see your face, active listen, ask good questions, stay engaged throughout the entire interview. Sounds yeah. like a Actually, great place. Go I'm ahead. also gonna throw in another couple things. One, if you ask more than one question at the same time, I am totally going to forget the first one and answer the second one. That is just what happens. That is how life works. So you've been warned. And then the other thing I would say is um, if you have the time, if Rachel doesn't, you know, cut you off, um, try and validate what you hear. So, so what I'm hearing is blah, blah, blah. And say it back to me. So that way I know, I, I feel like I, like you understood what I was talking about. Um, and I can correct myself if I screw something up too. Um, but it's also something that's a good habit to do if you're a consultant. So, okay, so what I'm hearing is blah, blah, blah. Did I catch that right? Um, 
always great to make the stakeholder feel understood that it's not just like, you know, all right, you know, it's not, it's not the, the interview, you know, where you're at the FBI or anything like that. Not that I've ever been through that, but I've seen movies. Good. And if you were, you couldn't tell us maybe. I'm not sure how that works exactly, but we don't all know. right, everyone. Uh, Bia asks, good question. If we're not the first person in the queue, should we still do our introduction? What I will reflect back to you is do what you would do personally if you were in a business actual conference room with a real life stakeholder. Make that decision for yourself, feel it out. If it doesn't work, then you know for next time. As always, it depends. It's all right, nice. so Vanessa is now going to turn into Jade Khan, National Service Manager. And I have my other glasses, my uh, <laughs> get ready to be entertained. Th these are called get ready funfetti is their shade. I'm gonna go off camera. I'm gonna bring y'all on stage and we will let the presentations begin. We will start with Amna and then Nagesh, Vishnu and Hala will be up on deck. Amna, Nagesh, two questions. Let the interview begin. Uh, hi, Jade. Uh, hi, Rachel. How are you? Uh, good. I hope you're all doing good. Yeah. So I'm the first one. Okay. I'm starting the party. Okay. <laughs> so like um, uh, going uh, before going deep down, uh, I just want to ask a very um, a basic question with you. Can you like uh, tell us about your organization and uh, the team in, in which you are working and kind of like responsibilities every stakeholder in this uh, building and service system like you are having? So if you can like tell us about that. Okay. Um, so my name is Jade Khan. I am the national service manager um, for Quick Cricket Wireless. Um, now, this isn't the gigantic Cricket Wireless. We're we're the same. We're we're Cricket Wireless with the same logo and the same name. That's the marketing department's problem, not mine. It just so happens we're in the same line of business with the same name and the same logo, but a different company because we're not on Salesforce yet, at least uh, the customer service team. So um, Cricket Wireless uh, provides wireless phone services um, to individuals. Um, and so uh, I run the um, customer service teams. Um, we have a few different customer service teams. Um, for this particular engagement though, um, what I'm really looking fo for is um, to bring on our billing team and our customer support team into Salesforce. Um, I, uh, I recently, you know, as being part of the like more executive leadership, um, I, I saw how well the sales team did um, when they got onto Salesforce. And so um, the company's kind of doing a slow transition, getting all the, all the departments in. Um, our billing and our customer support teams are really the, the ones that get the most calls in my, in my, uh, in my division. Um, and so those are really the first two teams that we want to start with um, to, to get them into Salesforce. So hopefully to, you know, reap some of the benefits that I that uh, I've seen some of the sales team um, reap since since they got on. Okay, so uh, uh, how big is your team? So my team's not um, too too big. Um, we've got a, a billing department. Um, so the the billing support folks are. We've got about twenty five people there, um, and then on our customer. This team. Uh, Jade, I guess you have a connectivity Last problem. Thing. Are you back, Vanessa? Oh, sorry. Was I not there? I said no, uh, we've got about for a little bit. Yeah. The last yeah. thing we heard you say was my customer service team. Yes, I said uh, we've got about twenty-five people on the billing support side and about um, about fifteen people on the customer support side. Okay. Thank you so much, Jade, for this overview of your team. Thank you. I'm excited to see what you come up with. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited too about that. Let's see. Fingers crossed. All right, Nagesh, the stage is yours. Hi, Nagesh. Hey, Jade, how are you? I'm good. Good. Uh, before I ask you the question, Rachel, in your agenda, it still talks about business analysts team sprint. Maybe you want to correct that. 
So All right. coming back to, yeah, coming back to uh, uh, Jed, uh, thank you for giving the little bit of introduction over there. I understand that you are looking for billing and the service uh, requests want to be onboarded onto the sales force. And you already have a sales team who is already there in the sales force. Now, if you can explain how after the sale is done, in what's current, currently, in which system you have the billing and service requests are being handled at this point of time? Uh, so, let's start with that first. Yeah, so um, right now, uh, we receive, it's it's kind of a mess. So we're, we're not on Salesforce. We have like a custom database um, that we're, we're currently uh, logging our, our calls into. Um, we receive customer support cases through um, a few different ways. Um, so we either get them through uh, a phone call. So the billing team has a phone line and the customer support team has a phone line. So they'll get calls and sometimes they have to transfer them over, but those both of those phone numbers are on the website. So sometimes we'll get a case through that. Uh, sometimes we get a case through our general email. Um, so uh, we just have one email address for like support. Um, so that gets a little bit hairy sometimes just because we have different teams all kind of using the, the same box. Um, so that's another way. And then um, we also have uh uh like a chat on uh, a chat bot uh not a bot but just like a live chat so um when when during our regular business hours somebody will be assigned to be the kind of the person behind the 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 chat that's on our website so they could also take cases through there so if there's a customer that has an issue um we we do sometimes take cases through that as well um once somebody gets a case um, we have our custom database. Uh, it's just called Cricket Support, you know, database. Um, and I mean, it's it's not it's not particularly exciting, but uh, it's it's really really basic. Based all, all we're doing at this point, um, you know, it, it, our our support is is still pretty much in its infancy. So we're really just kind of logging a few basic things in in the database. Um, we we don't really and and we're not really doing a whole lot with that information quite yet. We're, we're really just kind of checking out like more, how many, how many um, calls we get and what kind of calls we get. But, uh, but we do have a, a few different fields in there that would probably end up having to go into Salesforce at some point. Got it. Thank you. And uh, how is the integration that is currently there with the sales Salesforce system to the billing and the service request? Nothing today. There's nothing. So, nope. So, so this is totally green. And so, what what we what we're really looking for here is, while of course you know the the sales team has their sales stuff down, um, we're not quite ready yet. I think to other than then we'll all be using the 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 same kind of accounts, like the same the same customers. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think that there's going to be necessarily a whole big transition into, you know, after, after something's closed, like while, while we would love to, to at some point be able to manage, um, you know, which lines people have and, and, and whatnot, we're not quite there in our business maturity yet. So really what we're looking for is a, is a really nice solid way to track our support issues on the billing side, track our support issues on the customer side, be, be on the customer support side and be able to see when we're looking at a customer, you know, when is that customer called with an, with an issue? So we can get a better view, at least from the support side of what challenges this particular customer has had and what kind of challenges um, they've had. Great. Thank you. Have a good day. All, all right. Thank you, Nagesh. And Vishnu, you're up next. We'll move to one question from here, everyone. Uh, hi. Hi, Rachel. Hi. Hi, Jason. I'm representing Team 20. Um, I heard about your uh, current uh, process of billing and servicing. And uh, are there any budget or resource constraints that we should be aware of while designing the implementing new tool and process? 
Uh, yes. I mean, we're basically looking to get as much out of the box functionality as possible. So um, we don't have the IT staff really to maintain any like major code. Um, and also we, we really can't support any major integrations. So we're not looking to necessarily connect our phone system to Salesforce yet. Um, you know, that that's a little bit too much for us at the moment. Um, maybe next year we'll have the budget for that. Um, mm -hmm. What we're really looking for is to focus on how do we more cleanly um, document the cases that we're getting for each team um, with the information that we want them to track for each of these, for each of the case types that they get. Um, and mm -hmm. how do we get some nice metrics um, so that we can really kind of keep track of, of things. We also have this other challenge where um, especially around the holidays, um, mm -hmm. things can get a little bit hairy just because there's so many calls and everybody, you know, starts giving away new phones and wants to start up lines. Um, so having, I, I, I'm not quite sure what the solution would be, but whatever you guys can come up with, that would be a cool out of the box thing, um, where we might be able to, to maybe have some, some better ways to, to help support our customers, especially around the holidays when when we're busy, so that people aren't like waiting all the time. Um, maybe there'd be there could be some self service, or maybe um, there's just something that they could they could get so so that so that they're not you know waiting forever for for one of us, and that we're not so constrained with all the vacations and everything. Um, I'm totally open to to seeing that. Would uh would would love to see what you guys could do. Okay, thank you. Can I extend this uh, one more question for this uh, uh, for your answer? Uh, Vishnu, how, how about this? We'll bring the next person up, and if there's extra time, go ahead and raise your okay. hand again, and we, okay. can, we can follow thanks on for from that. Rachel and Jake. Nice to talking with you. Thank, thank you. Yeah, thanks for coming on. Okay, Hala, you're up. Hala is not up. Hala, raise your hand again. We'll bring you up next. Ravinder. Hello, Ravinder. And then after that, we've got Mohammed, Felicia, Gregory, and Aswani. Hello, everyone. So uh, this is Ravinder. I'm representing team number six. So I have a question like, uh, do you have any specific team members, agents? Those are... Uh, with spe special skills or expertise uh, that handle specific uh, issues or uh, requests? Yes. So um, I know you're going to be speaking to Roz um, next week. Roz will be able to kind of get more into the nitty gritty of the the day-to-day -day life. But um, from a high level, um, our billing support team, their major thing is they handle two big issues. They handle billing disputes and they handle payment. So, so if they're, if they're, you know, collecting a payment. Um, so those are really the two types of, of cases that we would have to track for the billing team. Um, for our customer mm -hmm. support team, um, the, the big things for them would be three different types of calls. They've got technical problems. So, hey, my, there's something wrong with my line. Um, they'd have to deal with that. Uh, if somebody wants to start service on a line or somebody wants to end service on a line. Now, we're not quite so advanced in our in our business and with our CRM at this point. You know, this is kind of our minimum viable product. We're trying to do our first pass phase one. Um, if we can log the cases properly and start getting some metrics from that, then I'm really excited about what the future might bring, where we might at some point be able to connect it to our telephone system, where we might be able to, to even start tracking, you know, how many lines a customer has. At this point, though, I'm really looking for how do we get all of these, you know, 40 agents and me um, all kind of on the same page as far as, OK, we, we understand what the process is. We understand what what, you know, what are who our customers are and what calls they're, they're making and how often they're making those calls. Do they have any open cases? Things like that. Okay, so I want to play back what I have heard is in billing department, you have two kinds of uh, requests. Those are processing right now, billing and the uh, payments. Yeah, billing disputes and, pay, and, and paying and pay bills. Uh, yeah, pay bills. And uh, in the case, uh, customer service, uh, as a customer service, you are providing technical issues, service uh, at starts and how service ends. Yep, that's Sweet. correct. Yep, thank you. Great job. 
Awesome summary. Thank you, Ravinder. Okay, Hala, take two. <sighs> You are unmuted. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes. Uh -huh. Nice. Okay, okay you, great. You okay. You. Thank you. Hey, Vanessa, we are Team 11, and we're so excited to help you to solve your service and billing issues through Salesforce, hopefully. So right. my question for you will be, what types of products and services does the company offer that need to be included in the billing system? Um. It's just uh, wireless services, so cell phone lines. That's it. That's that's it. We're keeping it simple for the for this one, guys. Oh, okay. Okay, that was quick. You want to go with another question, Hala? Yeah, that would be great. So, what is the uh, what is the issue escalation escalation path? So, how do you escalate the issues that you get? Um. So, with our current issues, um. Right now, it's pretty basic. So if somebody calls and and you know it's it's a uh, an emergency, um, then then right now we just transfer it to a manager. So Roz is the team lead, so they would probably transfer to to Roz. But um, as far as the process, it's more like if a case hasn't gotten closed in approximately twenty four hours that's mm -hmm. when it would get escalated. Cause we're really hoping that our, our big thing is like first call resolution. Like we really should, these are not super, we're, we're hoping not super complicated things. You wanna pay us? Great, we'll take your payment, fantastic. And that's mm -hmm. an, an another system where we're actually gonna process the payment. We just wanna be able to, to log, somebody made a payment on this day. Um, mm -hmm. and, and that payment was processed successfully. Um, so if let's say there's an open case for a payment, and that's taking that's for some reason like is still open 24 hours later that's a problem that would need to get escalated to to Roz. Mm -hmm. but other uh, services what about other services that you have to, other than payment um so uh as far as the technical problem same thing yeah. if it's if it's 24 hours so 24 hours is really the the big thing it would get escalated to the team lead if it's still mm -hmm. open 24 hours later but we we really are hoping to, that um at least 90% of our of our calls would get resolved within the first call. Okay. Thank you so much. And that's really the metric I'm kind of looking at is like how close are we getting to that 90? Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Hala. Mohammed, you're up next. And then we've got Felicia, Gregory, and Aswani. Hey, Did, how are you? I'm good. You're a little soft though. Yeah, can you hear me better now? A little bit. Uh all is right, there I'll something covering your? Yeah, just scream Not at me. me. <laughs> yeah, I'll just scream on top of my lungs. So, and hi, I'm Mohammed Abdullah. I'm based in Somalia, and I'm representing Team Twelve. And so, and so, yeah. My first question would be, and I heard that you said the sales team has been successfully transferred to the Salesforce and implementation. So. Is there, uh, are there any cool features in your uh, current support system that you would like to see in the new uh, implementation of Salesforce or the new system basically? Um, well, I love that they can do uh, the activity tracking. So um, right now we, we can't do that. We can just kind of create, okay, a case was created um, for, for a customer, but we can't see how many calls that, that case took. Um, so it would be nice to be able to see, um, okay, so uh, how did this case originate? Um, was it a, an email and three calls later before it got resolved? Did it get resolved in one call? Um, that's, that's something where I know the sales team benefits from that because they get to see, for example, how many calls it took, how many touches with that, that uh, account did it take before, before they were able to close it? Um, and so uh, I think that would be really neat to be able to see um, what kinds of communication uh, were involved in, in, a, in a case. Yeah, so you basically would like to see a bigger picture of the customer and interactions with the, your team. So you can- Yeah, I mean, that, that's, yeah, I think that's, that's uh, one of the cool things with sales. Sales also um, has the, uh, and, and I think it would be similar with my team. It, it's always a little bit challenging um, 
to to figure out which which uh, person in which department is available. And so I don't know exactly what they did in Salesforce, but they've got something where um, they they made it really easy to to for whatever salesperson to 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 grab the case um, so that so that it, you know it's not just one person who's just kind of like you know, grabbing all the sales and, and, and getting and getting yeah. bogged down, um, that there's a little bit more spread out. Yeah, right. Yeah, I got that. Thank you so much for your feedback. Thank you. Thank you. And you sounded awesome in the end. Thank you for not screaming at me like I asked <laughs> you. <laughs> That'll be a first in a stakeholder interview. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks yeah, for screaming at me. me. It'll be great. <laughs> okay, Felicia. Hello. Hello. I hope we got to share my camera. There we go. Oh, here we go. There, there we go. Are. Hi. Hi, Hello. Jade. How are, you? How are you today, Jade? Good to see you again. wonder if you're anything like myself. Do you have a lot of jade jewelry? I tend to get a lot of ruby jewelry because I was born in July, so I just kind of gravitate towards that stone. Do you gravitate kinda, towards jade jewelry? I'm a, I'm a tiger's eye kind of gal for some reason. Hmm. But I will say I did get this lovely little thing from the Philippines that uh, Tristan from Provar got me. I do wear oh. it all the time now. I actually left my dragon. If I have a dragonfly with rubies in it, and I just have, need to clean it. I haven't worn it right now, but that's good. I'm a jewelry person, just like you, so I like that. But um, I heard you earlier speaking a little bit about the different types of common cases that you have from billing, as well as some common cases that you have with your customers. Uh, would you say, you know, when it comes to their tech support and things like that, uh, what would you say on a national level, like your top two complaints that you get from your customers right now? Oh gosh, the customers. Well, I mean, the the really the challenging ones are the billing disputes and the technical problems. I mean, people making payments, like you know, at some point we'll 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 get that that app going so that they can just pay online and auto pay. You know, that's not my department. That's the finance team. They'll get they'll they'll get their stuff together at some point. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. usually, pay, you know, ca calling in and paying us usually not a problem. But P billing disputes oh like we want to resolve those right away we don't like right. those not great um, and same thing technical issues um and so those are the ones that uh, i i really want to keep an eye on um and right now we we just kind of we just have kind of notes right now um mm -hmm. so I, I don't really have any insights as to like what are the worst kinds of technical problems maybe raws have a little bit more uh, of an insight on like the specifics of like the you know how how bad um each one is all i know yeah. is i see billing dispute or i see technical support issue and, I, and, and if i want to read the notes uh, yeah i, I don't know <laughs> uh, yeah I i'm just kind of looking that. at it more on like the at, at a national level but certainly seeing that that high level view of like my whole team, I mean, it, it's it's these are just two of the departments that I that I manage. There are other customer support teams. And if you guys do a good job, maybe we'll do another sprint. We'll bring those other teams in. But um, but it's it's really important for me to have a high level view of each team, each each agent. Um, the cases that we're getting, you know, the volume, are, are there any, you know, are there, is there anything noticeably different if we have, I don't know if, if, if Salesforce does any trending or what kind of cool stuff we could see. Cause right now, all I have is my really janky report that I get from the IT department because we have a right. custom database and reporting was not built in. So that's, there's some, some right. IT guy that's just like, hold on a second and does some filtering and, and then, yeah. and then I get something in my email, in my email, but it's, it's not gotcha. great right now. Gotcha. Nope. I understood. Great. Thanks for sharing that information. And it sounds like they, that your customers tend to have to call in a lot to get that kind of help if they really get, you know, one quick pass through the app and that's it. So it doesn't sound like they can do much on their own. So they're kind of bogging your people down. So we'll definitely see what we could do to help with yeah. that. Yeah. As much as, I mean, I, I wish they wouldn't call as much, but I get, we're still kind of a newish company. If I can, if, if we could make our email or chat experience better, maybe that would, that would help. Mm -hmm. Um, but, uh, I'm open to seeing what you guys do. I think there's a lot of opportunity here to improve our processes because obviously they're very, very bad and we've just been growing really fast. So, uh, gotcha. we're desperate for this. All right. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Gregory. Fabulous. I've never seen you on camera before. Good to see you. Happy Friday, Jade. Oh my God. I'm hearing your voice. <laughs> I feel like we've interacted online forever. 
Sorry, yeah. I'm, right, I'm sorry. I'm back to being. By the way, I want to let you know our team loves our quick cricket wireless phones. Awesome, awesome. Say, one of the things, and thank you for trusting Lucky Thirteen Consulting. Um, we like to begin with the end in mind here, and um, one of the things that a lot of people don't pay attention to at the beginning, but needs to be considered as we're developing your system is training and development and so our question for you would be is what are the training and development needs for service coordinators technical support person across your various locations well, can we be starting to think about uh as we're developing our your system so that it'll make it easy for you to use um so for sure i'm gonna need a way to pull my own reports. Um, and if there's some sort of a dashboard or something where I can get a bird's eye view of everything, that would be cool. I, I know that the sales team has some cool things. And so I would love that capability. Cause like I said, right now I'm just bugging Frodo, the IT guy to, to, to get me information and it's not real time. Um, we got your back. Awesome. And then um, with the rest of the team, it's really going to be their process probably I don't I mean I don't know it's, we'll see what you guys come up with as far as as their their process but they're gonna have to learn um, you know they've got their email they've got their the, their current chat and they've got their their custom database and they've got their phones the phones aren't going to change you know their phone numbers are are going to be their phone numbers but how they process those cases after a customer calls will change and so um, helping them transition like certainly coming up with a plan on on how we're transitioning those people if there's going to be a cutoff date and then what the differences would be between their current process and their and their new process they'll have to be trained on how to use salesforce most of these people this is like they're straight out of college we're in a college town um th these are not super super tech savvy uh -huh. folks so uh so for sure um as, as if, if you're working on training then it's it's as 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 easy as it can be, um, even if there's like, I, like I saw when when the sales team kind of got onboarded, um, they had certain things. Uh, I think they had something called like in-app guidance that looked really cool. Um, you know, the, there might be some like, if, if there's some cool UI stuff that could even support the team, like so they don't actually have to like scroll through, you know, some some document to to do their job. That would be cool too. But certainly, I can also appreciate the change management that'll also have to go into this to get them transitioned. Sure. Well, I, I think there's some things and maybe making it really simple uh, here uh, that we can bake in from the very beginning. Like when you click on a field, what it says, what it is that field is. And Oh, wow. Yeah, so that'd be you, cool. You don't put the wrong, wrong information in. All righty, Gregory, it sounds like your sound is cutting out a little bit, but thank you for your oh, question. Oh, it's me. Uh, the question was, I, I just made a comment about some things that I thought we could do. Yes, but, I, uh, I yep, we're good. heard you about the fields. Um, that sounds awesome. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to what you guys come up with. Thank you, Jade. Have an awesome thank weekend. Thank you, Gregory. Too. Thank you, Gregory. Aswani, and then we have Stelian, Sanisha, Bia, and Kola. Hi, Jed. I'm Aswani from Team 21. So uh, I understood that the billing and the payments are handled through phone calls. So my question would be like, what kind of information you get uh, from the customers while doing the payments? And is the, the information we collect, how do you make it, like how do you maintain the secrecy if there is something that has to be confidential? Um, I will say we don't do anything confidential right now. Um, so I'm actually totally comfortable with the billing team seeing the customer support team's tickets. I'm totally comfortable with the customer support team seeing the billing team's tickets. Where we run into problems right now with our custom database is that sometimes they end up editing each other's tickets because like, let's say they have a customer that has like a ticket for each department open they might open the wrong ticket and start editing. And 
if there's a way to prevent that, that would be awesome. Um, so, uh, but as far as visibility, I'm totally fine with it. Um, we're not at the point um, in our in our maturity where we are processing payments um, through Salesforce yet. Maybe that'll be something in like a phase three or something like that. That would be wonderful someday, but we're just not there yet. Right now, we just want to log that a payment was made successfully or that they had a payment dispute so that we can at least just log the issues that each client is having. Um, as far as the things that we uh, currently log in like our current database, um, you know, it would be the customer. Um, they currently put in the date. I will say uh, sometimes our customer support people, you know, they take a lot of calls and they forget what date it is. So right now they're doing that manually. I hope that Salesforce, I assume Salesforce has a way that it'll just, you know, put in the today's date, log the case at the right time. Um, the issue type. So uh, if it's, uh, you know, the, the, the billing dispute, if it's starting a service, if it's ending the service, um, what, what we run into right now, um, a little bit of an issue is uh, because it's just kind of one screen in our custom database. Um, so yes, exactly, Rachel. Uh, so don't listen to me if I'm solutioning, right? Don't. Uh, just, <laughs> sorry, that was Vanessa talking. If I'm solutioning, don't you don't write the solutions down. <laughs> you you go. Oh, that's nice. But tell me what your problem are. Anyway, all right. Back to being Jade. Okay. So, um, so. Uh, with uh, with the the issue types right now, because every team uses the same screen because it's just like a custom database. It's like log the log the ticket. There's a big drop down, and so uh, sometimes teams end up picking the wrong um, the wrong issue, like for another department. So if they could only kind of see uh, ones that that would you know, or or only pick ones um, for for their their team, that would be great. Um, and then, uh, we also, whoever the agent is, of course, that's important to us. Uh, we also have like, a, a description of the problem. Um, we have a place for agent notes. Um, and then we also have like priority and status. Uh, our statuses are pretty straightforward though. Just, you know, is it open? Is it in progress or is it closed? Oh. Okay, thank you. I got it. But like what I understood is you wanted to handle the billing uh, cases, but not the but not uh, like you don't want to process the payments through Salesforce, right? You're looking only for handling the cases that comes with billing. Okay, I got it. Thank you. Yeah, keep it in simple. We don't we don't want you guys integrating a uh, Blackthorn or anything. Into <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> Nope, that's in Quest version two. <laughs> phase, phase five. Joking. When we start integrating t telephony. <laughs> Don't worry, y'all. Already. No, Stallion, sis, sis, hello. Hi, Jen. Uh, my name is Stallion. I'm with Lamax uh, Consulting. Uh, thank you for trusting us. Um, uh, the question that I have um, is uh, for customer feedback and surveys. Uh, do you currently collect any customer's feedback or satisfaction surveys after support interactions? Oh, gosh, no, we don't today. But that sounds like a dream. I would love I, I mean, I wouldn't throw that on like my must have list, but certainly it's been on my wish list. Uh, I know there's so many customer support teams that have, you know, those CSAT surveys um, and CSAT, of course, is a major KPI for for a lot of, you know, for for a lot of uh, for a lot of customer support teams, and we are not doing really a whole lot of that right now. Um, it, we just grew faster than than we could put in that that kind of service. So we're we're hope, hopefully catching up a little bit with Salesforce. I don't know how easy that stuff is to do in Salesforce, but I am open to seeing something if if uh, as long as as my my other demands have been met. If you need it, we can make it happen. Cool. I love it. Thank you so much. All right. Sanisha, you're up. Hi. Hi, Rachel. Hi, Jade. Aka Benisa. And by listening to you, I got that you are getting issue about the billing dispute and technical issue. Respect to DAP, I'm uh, we are a little curious that what are the peak period or busy season for Cricket Wireless? Sorry, could you repeat that? What are the peak periods or busy season for Cricket Wireless? 
Oh, goodness. Um, so it's really going to be holidays. And that's actually a, a huge pain point for us. Um, the, the, I, I think I may have mentioned those, the, I would say the Black Friday is, is rough. So that, that whole Thanksgiving week, um, Christmas is, is rough. That's kind of why we're doing this now, because we those are really the seasons that we're, we're stressed out about. Um, all of January is kind of busy after Christmas is just because people are starting services and ending services uh, that they got for for the holidays. Um, and then I would say then th that's those are really the, the major ones. But yeah, we, we want to be ready with this by by Christmas. And if you guys are going to be done with this in a month, we should be in good shape to have everybody trained and, and ready to go. And uh, how does that impact the service request handling and billing processes? I mean, right now, it just kind of means that, uh, especially with the vacation time, like because uh, we don't have the live agents on the chat, um, sometimes they're just, we, our chat is just off. If we don't have a live agent because they're all on the phone, that's just unfortunately not something that, that we can do. Um, so that's a problem. Um, uh, so then the rest of it's just a matter of, you know, it's longer wait times. Um, people get a little frustrated uh, and then it, it gets, it gets difficult, you know, with transferring the calls. I mean, ultimately we're, we just kind of have kind of angrier customers during the, the holiday season. And so whatever ideas you guys have, um, I am open to working with you guys on, on how we might without having to, please just don't tell me I have to hire another 10 people during the holidays. It's not going to happen. I'm not going to get the budget for it. It was either Salesforce or another couple bodies. And I went for Salesforce because I trust you guys. Okay. Sure. Jade, we'll try to resolve this issue with our team 14 consultancy. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank it's a lot of emails. You. Just it's all, it's more emails, more phone calls. And then our, our chat kind of goes out the window because everybody's busy. Mm -hmm. Already, Bia, you're up. Hi, Jade. Uh, thanks so much for sharing all this incredible information about the process that you currently have. Um, it's I not an incredible process, though, but I appreciate that. It will be. It will be soon. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, Good that's answer. what we're working towards. Um, I understand that um, you currently have a very basic process. And there are some challenges with it, but I wanted to know if there's anything that is currently working well and that you would like to keep uh, moving forward uh, once we introduce uh, Salesforce. Working well. Um, I can't say there's anything that if, I, I guess I wouldn't be comfortable changing our phone system right now. Okay. So that's that for me is 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 a it, that's just too much too soon too much change um we've had those numbers since the beginning of our business one goes to billing one goes to customer support they're okay. still just going to pick up the phone like i said maybe at some point we'll integrate those numbers in a salesforce but i am not looking to to change anything there um as far as other stuff that works well well no nope, i can't really think of anything that i am not open to to change. change. Okay. Yeah, it's we're still so so immature in our business processes that I, I do acknowledge that we have a lot of work to do to accommodate the the influx of calls that we get the number of people that we have on the team. Um, so I, I'm really looking for the best in class kind of whatever we can get out of the box that that will make this process smoother, uh, any automation, any reporting, that's all stuff that I'm all open to because we just don't have it in place right now. Okay, that's great to hear. So we're basically working with a blank page here. So as long yes. as we don't touch the phone numbers. Don't touch the phone okay. numbers. And I'm probably not looking to increase my budget a whole lot. So like, if, if you're trying to add, you know, you know, three other Salesforce add-ons and hey, we're also adding, I don't know, marketing cloud or something. I, you know, I, I they, they paid for me to go to Dreamforce last year. I saw that was a thing or like this AI stuff. I, that's maybe a little bit out of my budget for right now. I'm really looking for, give me the best thing you can get me that is basic for right now. And then we can build on from there. Sounds good. Thank you so much, Jade. Talk Thank to you. you soon. 
Thank you, Bia and team. Not Great hating on AI. That question. Not hating on AI. N not hating on what? Hi. On AI. <laughs> yeah, don't hate on AI. Not while I'm in the room. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Gola. Hi, Jade. Thank you, Risha. Thanks for your time this evening, Jade. Um, and I listen to you. Thanks for um, all the responses that you have given to my, my colleagues. I know they have asked you quite a lot of questions. Uh, I represent Team 4 um, Consulting. Uh, and I want to ask, I know you, you op operate in a, in a maybe a regulate, a regulated environment. Are there any regulatory requirements or constraints that should be considered? why we're trying to design this, this new solution? Um, not this particular one. I, I think in the future, when we start um, processing payments through Salesforce, and that's going to be way in the future, um, or we start tracking like people's address, like, you know, we are still really in our infancy. If we're just tracking tickets, we don't really have to worry about like, you know, having encrypting anything. Um, or making stuff not visible to other people. This is really kind of our, our first pass basic stuff. And we'll worry about that stuff later as we start building on this solution. But what you guys are building is going to be foundational for us. So it's really important that it works really well um, okay. so that when we do go into future phases, it'll be easier to build on top of it. We want this to be scalable. Yeah, even, even from a data protection point of view, I mean, you think... Um... Um, we don't have it. We don't have to worry about anything for now, right? That, is that what I hear from you? Yes. Uh, as far as compliance, as far as outside bodies, uh, as far as like security, I'm not. I'm not concerned. Um, my only challenge right now is is what I mentioned earlier with people being able to edit each other's tickets, which I don't want. Okay. Okay. That's fine. Thank you. All right, Srividya, you're up, and then we've got Beverly Stellion. Um, hi, Rachel. Hi, Jade. Hi. Yeah, well, I got a lot of information from our colleagues. They have asked you, what kind of data analysis capabilities would you like to see implemented or improved? Um. So for me, I I will say I don't get a whole lot of data analysis right now. I just kind of get the export that that Frodo pulls from me from the IT team. And then sometimes I'll play with Excel. I'm not great with Excel though. So um, it's, it's not awesome, but I have worked at other call centers before. Um, things that I would love to see um, as far as, as metrics, um, you know, I would love to see uh, how many cases uh, you know, people are closing. So by agent, um, by team, um, I would love to see uh, how long it takes to, you know, it, to close a case of each type. Um, I would love to see uh, how many how many cases were resolved after the first phone call or the first contact. So if it was just one email back and forth, fantastic, you know, done, first call resolution kind of thing. Um, the time, yeah, the time from open to close. Um, yeah, I think those are really the the big thing. Um, chat wait time um, would also be really nice. Um, sometimes, uh, our live agents, uh, you know, they, they're not paying attention to the chat, um, when they should. And so, so that's also kind of an issue occasionally. Um, but th those are really the, the main metrics that I can think of. And I know they're so basic, but, but would really make a big difference to the team, just especially if, if I could get them in some sort of a real time view. Okay. Yeah, definitely we will do it there. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Beverly, you are up next. Hello. Um, oh, my wrong. Yeah. Oh, and you know, actually, um, I, just, I just thought of another of another thing where even if we could just figure out like that whole holiday thing, like, man, even if I could, I don't even know that this is like part of a, a real time thing. But if, if I if I could get a report of like, how many cases per day we get just so I can even start tracking like when we might need additional support, that would be cool. Um, but I'm just gonna throw that out there as a maybe. Hi, Beverly, sorry. I just, Hi, I was just thinking about you? stuff. Stuff, I like stuff. So that that was helpful, thank you. <laughs> 
Um, so it's thank you for taking the time to speak with us today. Um, my name is Beverly, and um, I'm from Consulting Team 3. Um, and I understand challenges can arise with, with all kinds of stuff. So we're here to help you with that, hopefully. Um, one thing I noticed um, from the other team members is that you mentioned high volume times. And that sounds like a really big pain point for you. It is. Um, yeah, sounds like it. So we want to um, kind of explore some ways that we can design some effective solutions that not only address these immediate needs, but can really provide lasting um, improvements for your customers and the team. So my question is, have you thought of um, considered implementing any automated solutions, um, maybe like a chat bot um, to handle some of those repetitive questions, um, maybe an area where customers can find just information they're, they're constantly asking the same question over and over, um, self-help resources. Have you ever thought about anything like that? I mean, I've thought about all of them um, and I'm open to any of them. Um, our, our pain is that we, we need to, we want to resolve calls quickly. We don't want people to wait very long and particularly during holiday times, it's, it's rough. I mean, we are a very fast growing company with a very immature business process. So whatever you guys can implement within the time frame um, to, to help us solve that for that problem, I'm open to it. Sounds good. Well, we're, we're excited to help you with that. Excellent. Fabulous. Thank you, Beverly. And we're back to Stallion. <laughs> Hi, Jane. Thank you for, uh, you know, um, taking my, uh, my call. Um, so the last question I have for you is that are there any self-service options for customers to resolve common issues or on their own? Uh, I mean, there's like an FAQ on our website, but that basically just points them to the email address for customer support and our two phone numbers <laughs> or, or, Hey, do you, do you want to talk live to an agent? <laughs> so um, there's not a whole lot there right now. Uh, I'm certainly open to it. Um, but like, there's also like, that would be probably more helpful for like the technical support uh, mm -hmm. portion of it. Um, I don't really have great metrics right now on, on what percentage those those tickets are of out of all of them, but there, there are a lot of them. Um, I think some some self-help would be great there um, mm -hmm. or even, you know, the chat bot or whatever there. I'm, I'm sure there's possibilities there, um, but yeah, would be totally would be totally open to that. But of course, you know, it's, we can't like. At some point, we'll have a payment portal. This isn't the project for that, unfortunately. You know, gotta gotta what is it? Crawl before we walk, before we run, kind of a thing. I see, see, see. Uh, so, I'm, I'm, so I'm guessing that uh, there's not uh, there's no knowledgeable articles that you have at this moment. Um, I, I do have some documentation, um, but uh, but it's not great right now. Don't need to improve on that. Okay, that's good to know. Well, thank you so much. All right, Felicia, you're up next. Hello. Hello. Good morning. You got her crown. I love the crown. I just, I just figured, you know, we were talking jewelry earlier. I wanted to show you something I got for Ruby related. I wore it my 40th birthday last year. So if you decide to find anything in a tiger's eye oh, and a crown for your birthday, I suggest you oh, use man. Amazon and do that. I thought I had something cool to put on my head, and now I can't find it. Damn. <laughs> or you could use it. I had two of them. I had one that was a rose ah. gold one, too. So I did, I'll let you Get borrow this one. See, here you go. I'll put that on your head. But um, I figured I'd ask you, um, what would make you smile the most if you sat down on the first day of implementation in the service cloud, and you logged in, and you saw what? Like, what would make you completely overjoyed with uh, starting out brand new with us? Um, For me, I would love to... The idea that I might be able to to sit, I mean, not to sound like the, you know, looming boss, but no, but you wear a crown. You wear the exactly. national service exactly. crown, so it's fine. <laughs> but but right now I don't have a real time view of how my team is doing and how my customers are doing as far as this uh, as far as their the support is going. Um and so uh I know that we're still really immature in our business processes, but gosh, the idea that I might be able to sit and and just refresh a page and be able to see, oh, this this agent took this, these many calls today. This agent took this many calls. These are my problem people. These are my superstars. These are my customers that are 
the, that have been having a hell of a horrible time this this month. Um, all these things, you know, what what information can I get in real time that will make my job easier? That's mm -hmm. the stuff that, that that would help me run my call centers better. That's the goal. That's the goal. That's, gotcha. that's the goal for me. <laughs> now, I'm sure you're going to talk to Roz. Roz has had it rough. I mean, you know, we're, we've been growing really fast. <laughs> And, you know, good luck. Um, yeah, I'm no, sure I that she's got some other opinions on things that, that could improve things. Um, but for me, I just really need, I mean, I'm just, I, I'm, I just don't have enough information. You know, no, calls are I happening gotcha. all the time. It's not getting, the data accuracy is terrible. I just need accurate data and real time so that I can make some good decisions and support my team better. Got it. Perfect. Cool. Thanks, Thanks. Jay. <laughs> All right. Hi, Felicia. Hello. Vidya. Hello. Yeah, when I have one more question. Sure. What are the requirements and features are the critical to you and what is considered as nice to have? Uh nice to have. I think the the so uh, somebody mentioned the customer serve uh, the customer survey like the the post survey to get like CSAT scores. Um, I think that's more of a nice to have, but it would be a really cool to have. Um, the see other nice to haves. Hmm. Oh goodness. Um, you know, I, 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 I guess I'm not really sure. I'm, I'm, I'm more leaning on you guys. If there's any sort of bells and whistles that, that makes sense, that would help solve my problems. I'm open to it. Um, for me, I think I'm more focused on, it's always difficult when you're, when you're doing a digital transformation, like we're doing, um, to make sure that, that, and if we get this wrong, we have 50 people that are going to be angry when we're doing phase two and phase three. If we can do the basics smoothly, um, and well, that's really what I'm what I'm after here. And and when I talk about smoothly and well, I'm I, I what I've I've seen in a lot of and I'm gonna kind of be giving you guys some advice while I'm also the client. Um, what I've seen in previous engagements is um, sometimes when people do minimum viable product, um, they're like minimum viable product almost sometimes makes it feel like nobody's really happy. Um, mm -hmm. I kind of like doing more of a simple, lovable, complete, where I'm getting a complete solution, but it's lovable. It does what it does really well, and it's really easy to use. It's it's the folks that are going in that we have a lot of turnover. It's a customer support center, but that people can go in and it's intuitive. So UI, UX is going to be really important to me. Um, so bells and whistles are cool, but if you guys can make it so that it you know, somebody can go in and go, oh, this, this is so much better than what I was using. That's what would make me happy at the end of the day. Okay. That will do it. Thank you. All right. Let's do Gregory, Bia, and Amna. Then we will wrap up this interview. All right. I don't know how much more business I got. Hi, Jay. I'll make up something. <laughs> Hi, Jade. Greg with Hi. Uh, Protein Consulting. I have a follow-up question for you. You know, I keep hearing customers and I keep hearing business process. And when we're talking about customers, sometimes that can be nebulous. I just want to make sure that we're focused in our efforts here. Are we talking about initially we're going to do this, these processes for uh, business customers? Or are we going to be looking at B2C or... Should we just assume that everything's the same at first and then you'll, you'll differentiate later on down the road? Um, so I would say for uh, this particular exercise, um, let's just say when I was imagining this or sorry, when I was building my customer service team, um, I envisioned it as uh, B2C, so um, that we're, we're just working with individuals that are trying to turn on lines and, 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 and uh, pay their bills. Um, now, I did say there's a sales department that's on Salesforce. They're probably B2B. We'll get those teams on, on later on. I would say probably focus on, on it being a B2C, a B2C business for, for right now, just that these are individuals that are calling in. 
All right, great. Thank you so much. Cool. Thank you. Good, good question. And I, I am embarrassed that I didn't think about that more thoroughly before I got here. Excellent question. You, yes. You Excellent question. And, and stretched the critical thinking button. All right, be a. Yeah. That being said, like here, I'll take my glasses off for a second. That being said, if if you guys want to make it a B two B, or if you want to split it up into B two B, B two C, I mean. I, at this point in my head, I've probably given you guys enough for 15 user stories, at least, um, if you're going real small user stories. Um, if you guys want to split it up more, you're, you're feeling super ambitious, be my guest. <laughs> I'm back. Hi, okay. Ben. Hello. Um, so talking a little bit about the, the project and how it's going to um, work, who are the people who should be informed um, on the progress? Um, the, really the two main people. So I will be the decision maker. So I, I'll be the, I guess, for all intents and purposes, the product owner for this particular assignment. Right. Um, so I know you're going to speak to Roz. Roz is our subject matter expert. Okay. Roz is there day to day understands the you know the the strengths of the team the weaknesses of the team the strengths of the systems i don't i don't know that there's any strengths but you know maybe she knows some and certainly has a lot of opinions about the weaknesses mm -hmm. um but at the same time roz might ask for the sun and the moon and we might not have the budget for it so at the end of the day i'm the one who has to who has to say yes or no whether we're going to move forward with uh with with whatever we're going to build or not um, but certainly speaking to Roz to have a really clear understanding of the current state and the current pain points of the people on the ground, and also to get any sort of things that maybe I haven't thought of. Um, maybe Roz, Roz certainly has had a lot of experience um, in customer support at other organizations too. So she might have some really good ideas on, on ways that we might be able to improve things as well. Okay. That sounds And great. she'll also want different metrics than I do. I mean, I want kind of the you know, the, the universe of, of things and, and Roz might, might have some different ideas as far as the metrics that she's going to need. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. All right. On the last question for this interview. Okay. So I opened the party and I, I am closing it also. So, uh, okay. <laughs> okay. So my question is like, uh, you have like covered, uh, many aspects that I had uh, like been looking for just want to ask like um, for us is like every customer and every query is very dear to us and we have to like uh, cater every customer and solve every query but uh, do you have any like customer segment or any queries that you have prioritized okay these customer uh, queries has to be resolved first or these queries has to be on the uh, um, on the uh, on first on the priority list, uh, if you can uh, have such uh, type of algorithm into your mind. So, uh, like uh, as of that. today, as of today, we don't. Um, but I would say uh, generally, if somebody wants to pay us, I would I would consider those the highest priority cases. <laughs> uh, um, and if they want to start service, that would probably be number two for me. Um, I would say lowest priority would be ending service. Uh, and uh, then, you know, in the middle would there would be the billing and the disputes and the and the technical issues. Um, so those are kind of the, the priorities for me, but we don't really have any major system for us. It's more, um, you know, we just have that escalation after 24 hours because we're really, really focused on getting calls, clo you know, things closed uh, with just one touch. Um, but as far as the, the priorities, yeah, I mean, our, our customers, they're just kind of, you know, the, for our particular teams, it's really just kind of regular folks. Um, so we don't have any like VIPs right now. Okay. Okay. So, uh, thank you so much for, uh, uh like answering that just, uh, uh, because I'm ending it. So I just want to ask you the last question that yeah, all right. What? the success of this project likes to you what you foresee in it if you can summarize it and do it i am looking for a smooth end-to-end -end customer support person experience um, where somebody would be able to uh, receive a customer support or billing support request 
and very easily with as few clicks as possible, be able to log that that ticket and and monitor the status of it um, and close it um, easily, be able to find it again easily um, and have an idea of, you know, which cases they have open, you know, so that they can go back to them if they need to. Um, and that way we can kind of have a full view of the customer. Um, for me personally, um, I also want to have that real-time view so I can start seeing metrics on um, on how my customer support teams are doing. That's that's really the big thing for me, but more important than even my, my metrics and my dashboard or whatever it might be so that I can have a better gauge of how we're doing. I really, really want to focus on the customer support people and the billing support people having that smooth experience and and that way they can turn things around really quickly so that um also our customers spend less time on on the phone with them so that we can turn cases over as quickly as possible and as easily as possible and log them okay great so your answer has like uh get me in uh, doing wireframing in my head and i'm so uh happy you have uh summarized that thing for me and for everyone else in the um uh, in the session also yes Thank definitely you. hear from roz though she might have some different plans but yeah, sure sure <laughs> we're gonna she's incorporate that also she's very strong opinions <laughs> thank you so much awesome yeah it seems like uh, Roz and Jade have been scheming backstage as to what things need to be created. Let's take a breather, everyone. Wow. Um, these glasses are going to come off. I'm going to put my, you know, taking care of business glasses back on. Wow. Fantastic, everyone. Uh, great. There are some good questions in here. Things oh I, I definitely it. wouldn't have. I just Ooh. have an Astro. I, I, I want a crown. I'm so upset. I thought I had something I could wear. I'm very sad about this. We'll, we'll, we'll find a way to, to get you a crown, Vanessa. I'm sure <laughs> with all the technical skills, there is a Photoshopper somewhere in this audience. All righty. Let's do some feedback. First thoughts. What comes to mind regarding this interview from you, Vanessa? Um. Some Actually, I will say it was a really great conversation i feel like you guys really listen to me about keeping the conversation going like you guys like i have been on some of these where it's been like hard pivots and then a hard pivot this way so you guys were really good about listening to each other i will say i was a little bit surprised that i didn't get the like more general what are your pain like what are your major pain points there's usually always somebody that asks like what are you, and I covered most of my pain points anyway because I've got my notes on the side. But usually I get that question, so I would say just make sure that if you're if you're going to be in 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 one of these, you you want to ask what are your major pain points? You know, what are the things that if you could wave a magic wand would go away tomorrow kind of thing? Um, so and, question and, on that: If in a stakeholder interview in real life you did not ask about the pain points. Like you kind of facilitated and switched back and forth between this is what the learners need to know to create these user stories and deliverables. How, how would we gather that information if that question was not asked? Um, so at some point it will come out eventually. Um, it, it is always a nice kind of way, like asking about pain points is 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 almost kind of like a, a, like an empathy forward kind of question because it's it's really an emotional question um like what what would make your life easier as opposed to like a, pr a process focused question but even if you just focus on the process like my pain points still came out um but they they were just maybe a little bit more clinical than than they would have like it, if, if if the the question came out i i just and and the, it's not a, a massive criticism or anything just i just want to throw it out you always want to ask about the pain points but um, so for, so ultimately what you're trying to do with these things, you're trying to get the requirements because the user stories are going to come out of the requirements. And so um, as part of the validation effort, um, as you're talking through these things, OK, cool. Is there anything else that we need to cover as part of this? Did we you know, did and whether you're asking that at the end of the requirements gathering session, you should probably ask again after you've gotten the user stories validated, like have I missed anything? Are there any gaps in this process that, that I've missed? And you will eventually figure out what those what, what those requirements are. But I think it, there's a little bit of nuance between like, yes, this is a requirement versus these are the things that cause me pain. 
Right. And I think to that point, right, we can gather what is difficult about the process versus what is an actual pain point. Those are going to be your top critical items when you ask it in a, hey, where are your top critical items sort of verbiage versus kind of having to pick it and gather it from all over the place. You can have it all in one place with that question. What else? What else? What else? <laughs> it's like... It's a great question, right? If you feel like you've gotten to the end of it, there was a point, Vanessa, where you said, I don't even know if I have any more content, but it's like, what else is there? What else is there? There is usually more. There's always, there's always stuff. Um, I mean, we, we could have, but this is also where grooming is going to come in. So for example, at one point I started and yes, maybe we're cheating just a little bit, but like, these are things that you know, and I don't know what Mallory's going to say, or sorry, Roz is going to say. So maybe all my stuff will be out the water, and they'll they'll you know she'll she'll make up another process or come up with more problems. But like when we start going into grooming, for example, you guys are going to end up building cases. Um, so I mentioned that we want to keep track of like status. When you're in your grooming session, that's when when you'd be like, okay, what kinds of statuses do you have? I think I actually maybe mentioned the statuses, but like getting into that like. And that's not the kind of detail that you would get into in like a discovery call like this one is. But as you're grooming, you get, like I said, you start high level and you get down into those little, little details so that you're ready for build. Because a developer or an admin or configure or whatever you want to call them is not going to know. Is there, you don't want them to be making up statuses for, for an organization. You need your business stakeholders to be able to say, the, these are the statuses that are meaningful to us in our business. Yeah. Um, and that'll be for every user story that you have is getting down to those, those details. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And, um, I'm going to, I have a follow-up question with that. Also, if any of you have questions for Vanessa, please put them in the Q and A or the chat. Jade has left the building. So if you've got questions for Jade, sorry, you're going to have to go back ask and Roz. Watch the interview. Yes. Ask Roz. But if you have questions for Vanessa regarding how to conduct stakeholder interviews, please put those in the chat. Um, and then the question that I was gonna ask is, right, this is a Salesforce consultant quest. Jade, is it happy hour? Yes, this is a Salesforce consultant quest. So in this stage of the project with the discovery calls or you know stakeholder interviews, what hat are we wearing? Is this a BA thing? Is this an admin thing? In a real life project, like how likely would a consultant be to actually be the one conducting this? I know that was a lot of questions, but. No, that's fine. I'll only answer your last one. No. Um, <laughs> um, so uh, the way it tends to work in my experience is consultant is a title, um, but the role you play on each project might be different. So for example, I am currently an associate principal consultant in my organization. That's, that doesn't mean BA. It doesn't mean solution architect. It just means I'm an associate principal consultant. That is my title. So I'm always a consultant. That is my title. When I'm assigned to a project for a client, sometimes I'm the BA. Sometimes I'm the lead BA. Sometimes I'm the solution architect. Sometimes I'm the application lead. It really, that is the hat that I wear for that particular project, the role that I play for that particular project. So when we're going into a discovery call, as far as who is facilitating that meeting, I mean, ultimately, it's going to be up to the the product owner, the business stakeholder to give you the requirements. Um, that's that's really the important thing. But as far as who is running the meeting and who is asking the questions, um, that's going to be it depends. It depends. Um, usually it'll be your business analyst if you have a dedicated business analyst. Um, oftentimes it'll be your solution architect. Some, but there are going to be solution architects that are really not comfortable with asking questions and we'll leave it to the BA. Um, or if you have a BA and a solution architect that both like to ask questions, like having them tag team on those questions is also really helpful because the solution architect is going to approach it from more of a technical angle. So they'll already start thinking about solutions in their head and start asking questions to figure out what solution they want to roll with. Um, so they might ask some questions about like the current systems. They might ask other questions that the BAs wouldn't necessarily answer, ask where um, the BAs are going to be more focused on what is the business value that this will bring? Why do you need this? Right. And, and the solution architect asking 
solution facing questions doesn't necessarily mean, would you like a pick list? Would you like a multi-select pick list? Like y'all know this, you're in the consultant quest, so you've been through yeah. our sprints before and I've heard Vanessa talk about this probably ad nauseum, but can you explain like what might be some good questions that a solution architect might ask in an interview that are not actually solutions? So when they're asking things, um, like I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to think of like specific ones. Um, I, I'm falling a little flat here, but like, it's you wouldn't say. So you won't, so do you want a pick list? It would be more. Um, are you looking for something that does this, or are you looking for something that does this? Um, or they they might start asking questions like, let's say that some a lot of times when, especially for clients that don't know Salesforce, they'll just start talking about these big ideas that they have for the future. Um, that's where the solution architect, especially if they can start thinking going, oh, geez, that sounds really custom. They'll, they'll, they might ask questions about how important is that one feature for you? Um, mm -hmm. And seeing where they might be able to maybe cut things out so that they can stick to as much low code as possible. Um, because the client doesn't necessarily, they're going to ask for the moon, but sometimes it's really important for the solution architect to kind of ask the right questions, understand what the priorities are as far as the requirements go so that they can, again, come up with the best solution for the org. Because you don't want to build everything cu custom. And just because a client says a solution doesn't necessarily mean that's what the solution should be. That's where why it's important to really understand what is the business value that they're trying to get? What is it that they're trying to get to? They're not trying to achieve a button. They're not trying to achieve a multi-select pick list. They're trying to achieve information so that they can achieve business value. Right. They want to be able to do their job and what they envision might be happening. Like Jade did this probably about 40 minutes into the interview. Oh, it would be great if I could just, you know, pull up the screen. I don't remember exactly what, what you said, but, and yada, 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 yada. Okay. Solution architect, go back, figure out what is it that they're really looking for? What is the what behind it? And then, uh, yeah, yeah, expound from there. Uh, we have a question from um, dot, dot, dot. Uh, at what point would we have a more definitive idea of which edition we would be limited to? Starter professional, enterprise, unlimited. Uh, I'm going to ask you do, you, do you know what that's about? Otherwise, ex okay, go for it. Um, so in... So for this particular assignment, you guys are just going to, as far as I understand, you guys are just going to spin up dev orgs. Yes. Um, so, so that's, that's what you're limited to for this particular engagement. Um, as far as a real consulting engagement, um, you, you would be able to ask that question immediately. You should go in, you should go into it, understanding what kinds of licenses they have, because that could also be a big blocker too, or it could open up a lot of opportunities. Like, oh my goodness, you have this feature that you're paying for that you're not using at all. That might be a, something we can incorporate into our solution. Like, let's say they, you know, they're the Salesforce AE managed to sell them Quip or high velocity sales, which man, Salesforce was just given away for free for a while. Like those have features that you could be that, that you could incorporate um, into your solution. So having a, a clear understanding on the licenses that you guys have and and uh, as far as which additions you have, what additional bells and whistles you have as far as like clouds or you know high velocity sales, maps, whatever the heck it might be. Um, will you know if there's a, you know special knowledge things, if you do have integrations, um, all that stuff you should have a clear understanding of before you go into the, those discovery calls. Yeah, for sure. And then I think that follows up into this good idea or not to avoid project budget and timeline constraints as a consultant. Um, I would leave that to your, in a typical consulting engagement, we would leave that up to the project manager, or delivery manager. Usually the delivery manager is the, is the, is the person, but they, they might go under a different title in different consultancies. But there's usually one more overarching person who isn't necessarily in the day-to-day -day of, of doing the discovery or doing the build, but their job is really to be the point of contact with the executive leadership on the on the other side of the fence, on the client side, so that they can work out um, all those budgetary issues um, and time and work with a project manager as far as the timeline. Now, for me, the timeline is always going to be a problem. I'll, I'll push back if, if I don't think that the timeline is realistic, um, which happens constantly. Um, but uh, 
I don't, I don't focus on budget. Budget is, as a consultant is rarely my problem. It's the problem of my delivery manager and my project manager. Timeline is everybody's problem, but I don't get to set it usually. I just usually have, uh, I, I am a stakeholder of the timeline. Ah, that's a nice way to think of it. The consultant is a stakeholder of the timeline. I like that. Well, everyone, if you all have more questions, go ahead and pop them in. Vanessa, is there anything else that you would like to say? We if y'all don't have more questions, we could wrap up early on this Friday afternoon. I think it's been a pretty good interview, but I'll, I'll leave that to your call. Anything else you want to throw in? Yeah, I mean, I, basically, I'm I doing my best to, I, I feel like sometimes with some of these click sprints, like we end up like asking you guys to build a whole freaking company. I am doing my best here to keep things simple. And that way you guys can even get creative if you want to. Let's say you build something beautifully you know, with my very, very basic kind of problems getting solved, then you can do all sorts of fancy things and impress me with, you know, the art of the possible. Um, but I am really looking for, do this, my basics really, really well. And it's, and I know it doesn't sound like a lot because the business process sounds really simple, but there's so much that goes into it when you're thinking about security, when you're thinking about UX, when you're thinking about different people logging in, um, you know, and, and their visual experiences, when you're doing the testing, because you want to test it end to end, not just kind of by each user story. It does take more time than you would think. So we're, we wanted to make an effort to, to keep things simple, but do it really, really well. Yep. And more is not always better. This is a fine crafting sort of experience versus what you may have been accustomed to in the past. Really, really good point there. All right. Well, thank you. Oh, look at that. There's a Aww. crown. Thank you, Coach Vanessa. Uh, thank you all for being here, for showing up and asking your phenomenal questions. You will all be interviewing Roz next week for the stakeholder interview. So take everything that you've learned here today. You got a little bit of extra time to sync up with your teams offline. And have an amazing weekend, everyone. Bye-bye. Have a nice weekend, everybody. Thank you.